As a programmer, I'm always thinking about new things, new projects I want to do. Some of these ideas are awesome, some not so much. But when I come across an idea that I really like, I can't rest until I've completely implemented it. In 2013, I was playing a lot of KSP, and I knew I wanted to do some kind of mod, but I also knew I wanted to be the kind of mod that doesn't make your KSP life easier, but rather creates some kind of new challenge for you to embark on. Obviously, being somebody who's been hacking on computers his whole life, I really like the idea of creating a computer inside KSP. Early on, I made some very specific design decisions. Basically, I wanted to create a nostalgic experience of hacking on an old computer, just like the Commodore 64 I used to hack on when I was a kid. In fact, if you look at the two side by side, you'll probably notice some similarities. And also, I just kind of think that KSP has that 1960s technology vibe. So part of it was just trying to fit into the world of KSP. With KerboScript, I got the opportunity to create my own language. And I really wanted to create my own language for two reasons. First, e even though I could have, say, implemented JavaScript as the language of KOS, Kerbals have never heard of JavaScript because they're not on Earth. And if Kerbals did invent their own language, it would probably have really basic commands like go up, wait 20 seconds, print hello. And the second, of course, is that creating your own language is fun. When I started the project, I was at a time in my life when I suddenly had a lot of time on my hands. And towards the end of 2013, I realized that that time was drying up. I never intended to stop working on the project, though. I always thought that I would come up with some time later, and that just never materialized. In 2014, I fired up KSP to see what's new, and I realized that the Kerbal Space Center had been installing faulty KOS units into the new Mark II cockpits. Apparently, they're all just blue screening all the time, which is surprising because KOS actually doesn't have a blue screen. I looked into it and realized that the reason the Easter egg is there is because the mods had incorporated the Space Plus Parts mod into the main game and had just kept this texture in. So yeah, I was pretty proud of that. Uh, the KOS logo that I designed is now a permanent part of the game. And then a few weeks ago, Scott Manley did a video about automation and he mentions KOS at the end. And when I heard this, I was like, okay, I have some time now. I should dust off the old code, get it working again. So I got it working in modern versions of KSP. I packaged it up, got it ready for an upload to the spaceport, and then, wait a minute, where's the spaceport? That's when I realized the mod hosting for KSP had moved, so I logged in to see if KOS had made the migration over. And sure enough, there it was, version 16. But wait a minute, I never made it to version 1. That's when I realized what had happened. Dunbara 2, I hope I'm saying that right, had taken over the mod and was updating it. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. In fact, the whole point of making it open source was that somebody would carry it on if I was gone for some reason and I did disappear. Dunbara 2, I think, has done a really good job of carrying on. He uh, rewrote the interpreter, which it really needed. Uh, he rewrote a lot of the code about the way the windows work, which again was really needed. A lot of the changes seem geared toward making it easier to code. For example, files open a new window, there's a telnet server, and the main window is resizable now. And it kind of makes sense because that's what the community was always asking me for and it's a request that I never really fulfilled because again, it wasn't about creating an easy experience for you, it's about creating a challenge. But maybe I was wrong about that. I mean, my sense of nostalgia doesn't necessarily translate to everybody's sense of nostalgia. Some people don't remember hacking on old computers like that. And, and really, the challenge is about what code you're going to write, not dealing with a frustrating user interface. But here's what I don't understand. If you're going to make a resizable window, why would you keep the old monitor background? And if you're going to put code in a different window, why would you not still want a mono-spaced font for that? It seems to me that the window that has the open program in it is probably the one you want a mono-spaced font for. Instead, he's got the uh, just the standard Unity font. 
So yeah, I mean, if the priority of the new mod is to make coding easier, that's cool, but I think that you should really think about updating the interface to where you've got more of a tabbed interface like you see here. And then you can totally have modern things like code coloring and scroll bars that respond to the mouse. And I say if the window's gonna be resizable, get rid of that monitor background. It doesn't make sense, but keep the monospace font. That's really important as a programmer. So yeah, while I'm perfectly okay with Doombaratu's mod being considered the official KOS, I hope that he does make some interface improvements and doesn't feel like he has to keep old assets around just because I put them in the original version of the mod. Of course, even though I'm happy with the way the current mod is going, I still did a lot of work on dusting off my old code and making it work with modern KSP. So I don't necessarily want to throw that out, but at the same time, I can't really call this mod KOS anymore. So today I'm going to give you your first look at KOS Classic 1.0. Now, as I mentioned before, the Kerbal Space Center has been installing faulty KOS units into those Mark II cockpits, but I think I can fix that. Just give me a sec here. That's much better. So from now on, Mark II cockpits have an implicit KOS unit built into them, and you can actually interact with it from your cockpit. Basically, just click on the screen while you're on in IVA, and you can type to it just like you would the regular KOS terminal. Click again to disengage. I also wanted to finish off a few of the features that I had planned to implement when I was still working on the project, like these action buttons. You can make them light up by setting their light property to true. You can also use the on-off shortcut syntax. If you want to bind the pressing of a button to an action, use the on command. As you're probably aware, the steering system in KOS is a complete mess. And based on Scott Manley's review of KOS a couple weeks ago, I think this is true both of the current KOS as well as KOS Classic. Now, since I stopped working on the project, a lot of the things you can do with the steering have been implemented as part of the SAS system in the main game. So now instead of using the steering system, you can simply choose to set the target of the SAS autopilot. The SAS system in the game still isn't perfect, but at least this is a better alternative than you've got right now. Although this does work, I haven't found a way to get the SAS GUI to update properly, so you may see some weird effects where there's a disconnect between what the game thinks its SAS target is set to and what you've actually set it to. Here's an example of putting those two features together. I've created a ship that has the nuclear engine pointed upward, and I'm going to click this action button to start the detachment and spinny around process. After 30 seconds, which is how long it, the SAS system needs to properly reorient itself, the nuclear engine will engage and will circularize our orbit. So that's KOS Classic 1.0. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I really hope that I have time in the near future to keep working on this project. There are other projects I want to do as well uh, that involve the language that I developed for KOS. Uh, one of those ideas is a spiritual successor to Uplink. But again, I don't know if I'll ever actually have the time to bring that to fruition. So thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a lot of fun working on this project again and seeing the positivity that the community still has for this mod. And the fact that Scott Manley has now reviewed the mod, even though he's really reviewing mod that's more so Dumparo 2's mod than mine. Still, it's kind of a nerdy victory for me. And so until next time, and I really hope that's not a year and a half from now, hack responsibly.